a House Civis Broadcasting. Hello, my name is Luffy Haskell de Civis. And I'm Silas de Civis. Today is the 27th of Iron. And boy, do we have a special show for you today. It's going to be a busy one. That's right. Today we decided to do one of our Patreon decision episodes. So our patrons over on Patreon got to decide what today's show would be about. They decided on the top 12 sites to see in Sharn. And we'll cover that and maybe a little bit more on today's A Chronicle of Echoes. wonderful places to choose from, and after we compiled our lists and totaled up the points, we had to do some last-minute voting to settle on our 12 top sites to see in Sharn. We organized them on our personal voting from highest to lowest, and just like last time, we wanted to give an honorable mention to a place here in Sharn that almost made it. And I'm sure all of our longtime listeners can guess which of them made the list here. Why you gotta try and ruin the surprise? Not a surprise. Our honorable mention is the Sharn Petting Zoo. I've never been a Luffy, so why don't you tell me why this made the list as opposed to a place like the Sharn Zoo in Dragon Towers? Well, the Sharn Zoo is a really nice place, and I hope that it does well. But it just doesn't have the heart quite like the Petting Zoo. The entire Petting Zoo is built has an entire floor of the spire that it's on. And there's great big windows to let in the light and the air, but also like protect from like wind and weather. So that it's like never like rainy in there. And um, they've got the zoo kind of like set up like a wheel with different creature types at the ends of like each of the spokes of the wheel. Mm-hmm. So this means that like you can like go see specific creatures in whichever like way you want. You can also get like a premium or platinum pass, which lets you feed the animals or see special animals that aren't open to the public. And there's lots of places to get snacks and listen to music and watch some of the little critters perform tricks and stuff. But with the zoo, you're going to see actual creatures that you wouldn't get to see anywhere else. Animals, not, not, you know. You can see neat far off creatures too sometimes. Does the petting zoo have an aviary? I know the zoo is getting one. Once it comes in, we can go and see the birds flying around. I don't think that that would be fun. I like things that are, like, soft and cuddly. Birds aren't always soft and cuddly. Are you banned from the zoo? I am not banned from the zoo. You're banned from the zoo? No. (laughs) I am not banned. Then what is this? I'm just not a fan. Okay, they are very quick to assume things and are very strict on guidelines. Okay, they removed me one time, but I'm not banned. And like I explained to the the people there, I was planning on eating the raw fish in my bag. Well, that explains it. Uh, what were you going to feed? So number one on our and list was it is... The owlbear? Cloud Pool Park. Chimera. You're going to do the Chimera. That's a good call. No. Can can I just, can I please continue with... Blink Dog. No, no. They don't eat fish. I was planning on feeding the Boulette. All right. Surprising, but good choice. Continue. Thank you. Our top spot went to Cloud Pool Park, which managed to win by just two points. I think that goes to show just how important it is to the city here. I agree. 
I mean, when you think of Sharn, you think of the heights, and you immediately want to jump up to the Skyway. So where the Azura and Brilliant districts meet, you'll find a park that rivals any other on Corvair. It's beautifully cultivated, using an unimaginable amount of magical prowess. Like, everything in the park is crafted from clouds and solidified enough to move on. Like, you can walk on the clouds. You can. The, the level of detail of everything within the park is astounding. Each blade of grass, the trees, the leaves, the light breeze that rustles everything as you watch. It feels decadent and grandiose, but also feels incredibly natural. I agree. So, like, if you close your eyes while you're there, you can hear it all. And it feels just like any other park. You can even smell the grass or, like, the pine trees. And it's a great place to picnic. Or better yet, you can get an order from the Cloud Dragon restaurant. Bring your own lunch. They are overpriced. You just didn't like the spicy ginger soup. I didn't want it, and that Katya woman forced it on me. She's the owner. She was just trying to make sure that you were having a good time. She is a pest, and she kept hovering. I liked her. But you might be right about just bringing your own lunch. It will make it more special sitting on the hill and enjoying your favorite meal. Just watching the pond. <gasps> oh, oh, you can walk on the pond. I think the pond is more for Sharnians. It can be very disorienting. Maybe, but maybe they might like it. So, okay, this park has this pond or pool, and it's not made of water, but it's actually made of, like, crystal clear ice. And you can walk out onto it and look down, and you can see literally all of Sharn beneath your feet. It's like walking on the air. It's just, like, it's such a good view. It really is. The only downside is getting all the way up there and then... The one Galifar donation requested. Well, they have to keep it safe, and while I think a Galifar is a bit much, this is definitely worth it if you have the money. We have coupons for all of the places uh, we talk about on today's Echoer, so make sure to talk to our subscribe to get the details. A good idea for certain, although our next entry is free. There are a few places that conjure up the core of Sharn better than our next entry. This one was definitely one that was ranked high for all of us. It was. And it was actually Meeps's number one. Number two on our list today is the Hanging Gardens. While a great deal of places in Charn have you looking up or down at the city, the Hanging Gardens will have you looking upside down. <laughs> you proud of that? Yeah. I, I bet you are. Now, the Hanging Gardens is a section in Middle Memphis. It occupies the entire top half of a tower. It's a place where the nature of the Manifest Zone leads to an experience I don't think you can get anywhere else. Gravity is... R <sighs> Gravity is reversed within this small ward. You can see the top of the tower from the base... And if you look really hard, you can see the people moving around upside down. And to get there, you have to go through one of like the special ramps inside. They're designed so that as you start up them, boop, 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 it's a normal ramp. And then it very gently starts to like twist and twist. So suddenly you're walking off to your side and then you're eventually walking upside down and then into the hanging gardens which is up it it's very confusing a lot of the buildings in the gardens have no roof except on private ones just as in a way to experience all that section has to offer there are a few places to drink there don't it's a real issue in time i've always wanted to try to throw something to the city above or below but i don't think i would be strong enough i like to imagine that it would like get stuck so then there'd just be this perfectly stuck thing and people would say lucy did that she's so cool and it would be like my own special mark on shard well i feel like we do that each week plus i mm -hmm. don't think that's actually doable i think it would hover for a moment and then would be pulled by one side or the other that was actually kind of sweet and probably true. Well, uh, let's carry on, shall we?
Number three is a piece of history not many foreign visitors see. With the number of lightning rails and ships coming into the city, most people go through Terminus, and that is their start of their time here. Those traveling through Braylon from the old road are blessed with an amazing sight. Our number three, Rowan's Gate. Those of you who are new to the city probably don't know this, but during the start of the last war, the city wanted to show its support for their queen, Queen Rowan. And it was decided the best way to do so was to take the existing gate district and turn it into Rowan's Gate. So they decided to make this massive stone monument. And so they took the gate that was there and then they put a big old tower on it and then they put a big old statue of Queen Rowan on it. And this huge statue shows Queen Rowan wielding a sword above her head and a scepter in her other hand. And what a glorious sight she is. I'm surprised more people don't see her, and I hope us mentioning it will help. I agree. It's really an amazing thing to witness, just the feat of the amount of detail that they've put onto the statue. Like, if you get close enough to her face, like you fly up there, you can actually see, like, the pores. Yeah, they should have done a nose check before modeling the statue. <laughs> <laughs> Silas, you're not wrong. But anyway, since we're on the topic of amazing sights, let's go back to the Skyway for our number four entry, the Skyway Lookout. Just a short walk from the Azure Gateway Restaurant. Now, there's a decent restaurant. The breaded veal was wonderful, and I didn't have to talk to anyone. It was all right for Galifar Fusion. The restaurant wasn't very busy, and that always feels weird. If it's good, why isn't it full? Because the people of Skyway are fickle and don't venture out as much as they should. Perhaps. But anyway, back to the Skyway Lookout. A large lookout sits on the southern edge of Azure, the district. <laughs> and it's the best place to see the sunrise or the sunset in all of Sharn. It's so high up, and it feels like if you stand on your tippy-tippy toes, you can see just past the horizon and make the day last for a moment longer. It also has a beautiful view of the ocean, and feels more secure than the ice pool and less dizzying than the hanging gardens. I've always wanted to take a featherfall token and jump from there, and see just how far I can go. Oh, they actually have, like, a magic cloak. I saw once that you can use to, like, glide. But you also have to, like, hold it with both your hands out to the side like this. And it has to be nighttime. I wouldn't want to fall into an unknown section of Sharn in the middle of the night. Nah, you could just turn it into a bat. The cloak lets you do that. Well, it seems like we're learning quite a bit here today. <laughs> uh, on to number five. Daka's Watch. This rated fairly high again, and I debated over exactly why that was. But I think it's extremely weird and inherently gnomish, and that's what did it. Yeah, that would make sense. I know that my dad took me to see Daka a lot, and then Meep said that his parents took him there too. Hmm. For those not in the know, there is a 12-foot pillar of dense wood in High Hopes, um, originally the pillar was going to hold a statue of some priest or martyr or something. I don't know. But when funding fell through, it was just kind of left there, abandoned. And one day a gnome woman named Daka climbed up there and started yelling advice to people. She's fairly good at what she does. And she seems really nice and cares about the community. I think that this is why I like this. And I think the visitor should go. She doesn't seem like... She's divining answers from on high, but that she's invested in the community. Even if you don't get your advice from her, it's a fun novelty. I mean, over 120 years of doing it, I'm sure she's just good at reading people. Well, that would make quite a bit of sense. So rumor around Sharn is that Daka is actually, like, blessed by Boldry, and that's why she gives such good advice and why... She's literally been sitting in the same spot for 120 years and, you know, has not need to go down to eat or go potty or sleep or nothing. I actually thought that she had a double and was swapping in and out is what I heard. <gasps> that 
That's blasphemous. Well, I'm just saying what, what was said to me. No. No, she... No. No. Well, let's move on. Uh, number six is the Crystal Fall Memorial at the Dazzle Bridge in Highest Towers. It was originally one of the biggest bridges that connected the Glass Tower to the Highest Towers district. When the tower was sabotaged, several memorials were put up throughout the city, and it was hard to decide. When it made the list, we talked about all of the different memorials. We decided to feature this one. Well, I think the memorial at Sunset Park in Ocean View is nice, and seeing the competition at each crystal fall is a lot of fun, we ultimately arrived at this one due to its direct connection with the tower. And it's safer than the one in Fallen. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, that memorial feels sadder and is in a terrible, terrible neighborhood. The Dazzle Bridge Memorial makes use of a section of the bridge and an archway that they installed. And when you stand and look through, you can see where and what the glass tower was. It's really sombering, and I wish I was alive to see it at its height. My dad knew people that lived there, and while well, they're okay and didn't get hurt, he still saw it as a wound that this city can never recover from. And he actually has a piece of the tower in our house. I don't know if I see it that same way. There have been generations of halflings and humans who don't feel anything when they think of it. Fallen has almost been completely abandoned at this point, and it feels like everyone else has moved on. But I remember coming home and seeing it missing from the skyline. And just feeling that. It's, it's sad to think about things that move on around us. While it feels like we stand still, the day of mourning feels easier if four years is a large chunk of time to you. It felt like a long breath. It is different, but we remember, and hopefully that's enough. I'm sure there's an elf who saw it happen and will remember it long after we're gone. I'm sure to him, those 80 years felt like a long breath, too. Moving, moving away from our local tragic past, and to the tragic past of another continent. Number seven, the Dezina Museum of Antiquities. Located within the Delanin Tower of Morgrave University, this museum specializes in artifacts brought from Zendrek. I was a huge fan of this museum growing up. They do have quite a few exhibits that are consistent, while others are cycled out quite frequently. Because they're bought by wealthy collectors or stolen. Most likely for wealthy collectors. That's true. But to my young mind, the constant turnover made it exciting. I had to go back over and over because you never knew what you would see. They had an exhibit once, uh, Se Secrets of Zendrik. They had magic items from giants and pressings of carvings and interesting recreations of machines like looms and washing basins that were found in Zedric. I thought it was so fascinating. Uh, what about some of the other exhibits? Oh, they have a seasonal exhibit that I always like to look at. Um, it's on the way scrolls have been preserved over time. Like, they've got a bunch of scroll cases from different cultures across time, and, like, how how some of the first spell books were actually just spells carved on wooden plaques that were held together with leather strings. I actually uh, was able to donate a few pieces to that particular exhibit when I was working um, in conjunction with the Clicktop Guild. Well, uh, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that you had such a positive interaction with Dezina. I have a love for history, but Dezina doesn't do it for me. Um, how come? I have it on good authority that they have several fake pieces in their collection. <laughs> what? That's not true. Oh, no, it definitely is. I'm not going to go into detail, but there is a particular stone carving that bears a likeness to yours truly. You are lying. They check all the pieces that come in. You can't fake that. When we finish, I will tell you which one in particular. Then the next time you go back there, see if it looks like me. In fact, a few years ago, there was a piece called the... 
I have the other half in storage. Artist signature and everything. <gasps> There's no way. I'm telling you. <laughs> you gotta bring it in. You know what? Care to wager on it. If I'm right, you have to do a whole show on the artifacts of Zendrick with Kevin. And if I'm wrong, I'll do three of those tiny tavern things. Oh, deal for sure. But him summoning in tentacles doesn't count. And you have to deal with actual musicians plus Kevin. Deal then. Uh, you're up for the next one. When compiling a list of things that feel inherently Sharnian, we came across something unusual. Each of us had a section of a tower that is clearly influenced by another nation or culture. We debated amongst Little Zendrick, or the Sarlone and Spiral, or the Little Plains. We settled on our number eight, the Little Plains. Now, I'm sure you're asking, why include these on this list? While each has an atmosphere from a far-off location, it still feels inherently Shardian. Talentan sections in other major cities don't feel like any of these. The tower itself is inside out. The normal open area is in the center, with a ring of buildings on the edge is completely reversed, and the streets instead run along the outside of the building and the tower, and they are exposed to the elements. You will actually see all manner of dinosaurs roaming around the streets and navigating them expertly. We went to lunch at, um, uh, what was it called? Uh, Glidewing's Flight. It, it was that, it was that wings place. And just with that quick pop, I remember I saw three horns and hammer tails. I saw a blood striker, bunch of clawfoots, and a whole flock of glide wings. Silas, you prevented me from petting almost all of them, but it was still amazing. That was for your safety. It's no different than any other animal, except a lot of them are more deadly than a horse. Just barely. <laughs> Which means they just need more love. No, that, that's not how that works. It definitely is. You gotta give the grumpy looking ones in particular just a quick little kiss on the snoot. Just a little... And how do you determine which one is grumpy? You know what? Oh, you Never can mind. Just feel I should have just stopped. So, like, the hammer tails for sure are really grumpy. They're all squat and marching around like. And they look like big armadillos, but they can't roll into a ball. And they must just be really upset about that. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Let's get back to the planes, huh? If you don't see yourself taking the time to travel all the way to Gatherhold, you're definitely going to get the feeling of being there. The architecture has that genuine feel, and the community is very open to outsiders. If they're open to outsiders, why did we have to wear disguises? Well, that had less to do with outsiders and more to do with a certain influential insider. But everyone, not me, will have a great time there. Uh, up next we have... So we're going to segue instead of having that conversation. I, I believe number nine. Number nine. The Koronath. This is the Kolkoran Temple, and boy does it show. It's perhaps one of the most ostentatious and elaborate buildings in the entire city, and that's saying something. Well, it should. The sovereign wealth deserves to show off a little bit. From the entryway as you slide past the circle of columns. Or the colonnade, as it is called. Oh, that's a good word. Yeah, I'm a keeper of one. Well, beyond that, the interior of the temple is a hundred-foot dome, completely covered in gold and gems. The floor is made of precious gemstone, and everything else is made of gold. The candelabras, the censures, the basin for holy water, every sacral object. And all of that is guarded over by temple soldiers who keep a very close eye on pilgrims, sightseers, and would-be thieves. So, to those listening, 
and thinking about an easy payday, just go ahead and put those thoughts aside. I know a guy who managed to do so. He was desperate, and he managed to get his hands on one of the uh, ice blue sapphires from the ceiling. Oh. He never said how. He pawned it off to feed his family, though, and as he left the fence, he was immediately set upon by a flock of white ravens. They attacked him until all the coins scattered, and he wasn't able to hold on to a one. Oh. Oh, no. That's that's definitely not good. Well, that was only the start. He said he was cursed, and that any time that he would touch a coin, he would be beset by unfortunate circumstances. Well, well what happened to him? Well, I, I don't know. I, I know he went to see Caliph and Riak, and... Shortly thereafter, the gem in the ceiling was replaced or returned, so... Who, who's Calfan Riak? The high priest of the Koronath. Oh, well, uh, that's definitely an incentive not to steal from there. So please don't try to. Yeah, we can't be responsible for that. So, Silas, would you say that a lot of these places have been around for a very, very long time? Like a few other things we know that have been around for a very, uh, very yeah, I get long... I Cute. Continue. Always. We did decide to go with a fairly newish location for our number 10 spot. The House Lirindar Air Dock. I think this isn't higher simply because it's so new. I agree. I think the amount of effort that went into its design and, of course, the versatility of airships means we'll probably see this significantly higher in the future. I don't know how much actual effort went into the design. I mean, their house Lirindar, and they made the airship docks a giant squid. It's a neat idea, and the execution is wonderful. You know, the way that the, they seem to, like, move and float as airships are brought in. It's really cool, but it just feels a little bit lazy. Well, I disagree. I've been to the tower a few times. I went with tours, and let me tell you, it was worth every minute of those two hours. I learned quite a bit about the construction and got access to a few areas I would never have seen otherwise. I wanted to do that, but it's just like one of those things that I just don't have time for. Well, then, <laughs> I'll take it from here. Uh, the air dock is designed like a squid wrapping around the top of Larendar Tower. Each of the tentacles is actually a walkway and can be used for two ships to berth at at one time. And the two bigger tentacles are actually used to unload cargo. Okay, fun fact. Squids only have two tentacles, the big ones. The other guys are just arms. Oh, well, my apologies. Then they use the arms for passengers and the tentacles for cargo. I didn't realize the airships carried much cargo. I thought it would just be like a weight issue. Well, they don't use it for heavier cargo, but they do use it for important things. I, I imagine they transport light, valuable things. Okay, so just light, important stuff. And we know where most cargo in the city goes, don't we, Silas? We do indeed. It goes to our number 11 pick, Tavix Market. I didn't put this one down, but you and Meeps included it, and I'm glad you did. So, if you want to find a thing, anything, Charn's probably the place you can buy it. And Tavik's Market has just so many things to buy. This district is basically just a massive sea of open air stalls and markets, and you could get lost there for days and still not take in every part of it. Things come from all over Eberron, the whole thing, just to end up in one of the little wooden stalls. And that is not an exaggeration in the slightest. I've been walking through aisle after aisle of stalls, and I found everything. Spice vendors selling spark shave or a thrackle or some far-off spice pulled from Arganesson. And then, of course, you have Brelish farmers coming in each morning, delivering fresh produce from their farms, weapons, fabric, everything. I really like um, 
that like a lot of the custom handcrafted things you can find at Boots. Like dragon shard jewelry or handcrafted spell component bags or wands. Like I love the feel of a handcrafted wand. Kenneth wands are, they're reliable, but they feel just so light sometimes. But you get a wand made by a vendor and they got some bulk and heft to them. Well, the, the food is good, too. Uh, there's a human vendor I love. He's right next to the smutty romance novels. Which one? Is it the elf that has the series where all the gods are members of a secret group and then a new woman joins and they try and woo her? Oh, what's that series? It's, uh, uh oh, Sovereign High School Host Club. What? No, it's the woman who did Dragon Mark by Passion. Oh, yeah, that one's all right. Well, next to her is a food vendor who does fried spiders, but does the little ones, and then they put them in the candy cobweb. Mm. Oh, it's really nice. You get that savory mm -hmm. and that sweet. It, they are absolutely perfect. And my favorite part about that is that it's just a short walk from our number 12 down a quick flight of stairs reaches you to... Terminus. Our number 12 is Terminus. And you know, Silas, this one almost didn't make the list. You put it as your number one, which tied it with my number one, and Meeps had to decide. So Terminus made the top 12. What makes it influential for you? I'm going to say this before you do. It's going to be the lightning rails. Okay, go ahead. Well, when doing this list, conventional wisdom said certain places were going to make the list. I hope that Terminus would be one of them, and I'm surprised neither of you listed it. We've all traveled to other places. Uh, Luffy, close your eyes for a moment. And think of the arrival back here in the city from some far-off place. Mm-hmm, okay. You take the lightning rail in and arrive at Terminus Station. The crowded rail platforms as you make your way through. The scent of exotic spices from various food carts. You look around and see cargo being unloaded, the lifts, the sky coach, the house Orion enclave, the taverns, the inns. The rude people, the bad smells, the pickpockets. Oh, exactly. Look, some of the Orion guys dropped my luggage. This is everything that Sharn has to offer. The good and bad, all nestled in a small section of the city. You can feel the heart beat of Sharn without ever having to head higher. And a lot of visitors can't do heights. I mean, all of those are fair points. And I do definitely feel like I'm finally home after I step off the rail there. I mean, I did work at one of the Civis messaging stations in Terminus before I got moved up to Clifftop. It was nice for the most part. Well, I'm glad we can agree on its position then. I don't know. I I just, I can't shake the feeling that Terminus made the list because House Orion is letting you ride for free. Well, that's not fair. I didn't bring up the reason the petting zoo keeps being mentioned is you're being paid by them. <laughs> I am being given love and affection by animals. That's not getting paid. So you aren't going to be on the posters advertising them then? This isn't about me, Silas. You are the one getting access to the lightning rails to advertise for them. I can smell the ozone on you. That is from the model ones in my office. <gasps> Liar! You couldn't have been playing with your model lightning rail toys because Kevin accidentally ate three of your mini conductor stones. Kevin. You know what? I have to have a word with our associate. I will leave you to it. Well, I hope to the great many visitors that we get to our fabulous city each day that this was a helpful broadcasting. I enjoyed listing out some of my favorite places, and I hope that you all get to experience them. Maybe one day we can do a broadcast outside of Sharn. But until then, I think that we'll all just be keeping an ear out for those echoes of hope.